The scripture reading is 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. Again, 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. Last words. You know, I want us to start off by thinking about last words, maybe, that have been spoken. Usually the last words are personal, they're they're full of compassion, and they're usually inspiring. Not everybody gets to have these famous last words that they pass on to their, their spouse or their family or their children. But David had the opportunity to do so. You know, before I I started thinking about famous last words, and I I looked up some famous last words, but I wasn't satisfied with that, although I found some interesting ones. Uh, One was uh, kind of morbid in a way. It's the body is buried by the oak tree. A guy kept saying over and over again, well, after he passed, they, they, they dug all around that oak tree. But, you know, there's some other things. It's interesting. I found that the, one of the, the major, a lot of the last words known are the simple phrase, mama. It's probably the most famous in 2019 that it, this survey was done. Uh, but famous, or last words, when we think of David, he had this opportunity to pass on last words to his son. In verse 1, chapter 2 in 1 Kings, it says, Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. In our Bible class this morning, we talked about how... uh, There's information even in certain uh, circumstances. One that we talked about this morning in the praise of God, there's information that we can learn. In verse 2, he said, I go the way of all the earth. You know, when we think of death, we usually don't think of uh, one that uh, we we, want to think of. We don't want to think about it. In fact, we don't want to really dwell on that thought, but as Christians, I think that we need to have a different attitude towards that. The fact is that, yes, we are leaving this physical earth, but we're gaining a spiritual kingdom to be with our Lord for eternity. Now, that is important for us to have that proper attitude, and in these last words that, that David is inspiring uh, uh, his son Solomon, in fact, we, they're important uh, because they are inspired by God. They're, it's given by inspiration of God. They have meaning because it is from one follower of God to another follower of God. David's last words are kind of unique in itself, from a father to a son but also to a king and an upcoming king, a dying king to an upcoming king. They're not just words of wisdom, but in ways they're spiritual instructions. Be strong. Be strong, David said to Solomon. David knew that being a leader of God's people would take a certain type of man, and that is a strong man. Solomon would have power and wealth, and fame, but David wanted to encourage Solomon to be strong. Now, in some ways, we don't know whether this is a, as a son, a father to a son, or from a king to a king. So we can kind of think about and and know what, or, or maybe think about and kind of guess what um, 
he meant by that. In some ways, you think of this as being a, a physical uh, uh, way of in, uh, inspiring him. There's going to be a lot of fleshly desires that could come upon him, especially being the king. Beware of them. Be strong. Be strong in your ways. Be strong over your temptations. Be strong as a leader uh, of God's uh, uh, nation. Be strong. Think of how David was. If you want to flip over to 1 Samuel chapter 17, we get a glimpse how David was when he was a young man. David heard about this man Goliath and how he was, he, he was saying these uh, uh, things about the children of Israel. And starting in verse 26, David spoke to a man who stood by him saying, What shall be done for this man who kills the Phil Philistines and takes away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You see, David knew that there was something wrong with this man who was, who was defying God and his armies and his people, threatening them. And, and you know what David did? He did something about it. It took a strong man to make a stand. In fact, in, in verse 45, David was before Goliath and he said this, he said to the Philistine, you come, with me, you come to me with a sword, with a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I'll give, you, give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the airs and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. It takes a strong man to make statements like that. Before the biggest enemy of Israel stands a man in a, 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 a big in stature, Goliath. But he stood against him. He was strong. He was not a, a young man. He was, we don't know his exact age, but at the same time, it didn't matter because he was strong and he was not going to take this evil that was going on. And he also knew who was with him. He knew that the Lord was with him. Being strong uh, means that, that he is going to uh, uh, stand firm in the way that he knows how to live. And that's by fearing God. Think of the instructions that Moses gave to Joshua. Moses gave to Joshua this from one leader to the next leader. In Deuteronomy 31, starting in verse 6, he said this, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all of Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with, the, these, with this, this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you will cause them to inherit it, inherit it. The Lord is going to be with Joshua. The Lord was with Moses. He's going to be with Joshua. He, and he's telling them to be strong and courageous. And then we look over a few chapters later, well, the book of Joshua. And what does the Lord say to Joshua? In, in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 6, Be strong and of good courage, for, for this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. As David is approaching his last breath, he tells Solomon to be strong. To be strong. Being strong means to faithfully carry out one's responsibility to the Lord. 
even in the face of danger or even fearful circumstances. Be strong in your faith. Be strong in the Lord. Think of what Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. He is the one. The Lord is the one that is going to give you the strength you need. Solomon is, is getting this wisdom and spiritual instruction from his father to be strong. He goes on to say, prove yourself a man. Whether this is meant for the king or meant for his son. He's talking to him and telling him to, to be a man. I think it was Clark in his commentary said about this. Act like a rational being, not a brute. He was to act like a man who was most devoted to God. When, it, when we think of what he said, be strong and therefore prove yourself a man, is to, to act properly in your, in your doings, in the things that you involve yourself in. And that takes integrity. Prove yourself to be a good leader, worthy of someone following after you. Both a physical leader and a spiritual leader that brings the people closer to God. A leader that fears God and keeps his commandments. A person, a, a father, a, 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 well he's a child at this point, but uh, when he becomes a father, be one who is a spiritual leader in the home. Have integrity in all that you do. Prove yourself a man is one way, as we think about it, he's not being sexist here, he's saying... Don't be childish in nature. Think of, think of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 20. It says, Brethren, do not be children in, under, in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. He said, prove yourself a man. Don't be childish. Don't be, you're getting the kingdom. Don't be childish with it. Again in Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 11, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, Paul is writing and he said he, God gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to be a perfect man, to the measure, the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried away about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of the deceitful plotting. Prove yourself to be a man. Prove yourself to be a man, a mature man. And think of how, or what could happen if he didn't. He could be tossed away and tossed to and fro by anything that's out there. He could be influenced by worldly leaders. He could be influenced by, by people in his close quarters. Prove yourself to be mature in your, in your acting, in the way you do, in the way you live. He goes on to say, and keep the charge of the Lord your God. There is a determination that comes into play here. Keep the charge of the Lord your God. To obey God. Notice how David did not say my God. Keep the charge of my God. He could have said it that way. But he said your God. Meaning that, that not only David followed after God, but Solomon did too. Walk in his ways. It means not to turn your own ways, but God's ways. Not in the ways of the wicked, inheriting uh, riches and power and fame, but you're going to have work to do as well. He's going to have to build the temple. Keep the charge of the Lord in your ways. Walk in his ways. Keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. It is important to have determination to keep the charge of the Lord. 
when we look at keeping his statutes, consider all your ways. Make them holy, make them just, make them good, and receive them in a proper manner, and, and be, uh, be careful how you observe the statutes of, the, of God, the commandments of God. Make sure you're following them. We need to follow God's ways. And the way God says to do something, we do it. And Solomon was to do that. If God said, don't do this, Solomon, don't do that. Follow his statutes, keep his commandments, and also keep his judgments. Whatever God has determined to be right, it is inherently right. What God has determined to be wrong, it is inherently wrong. This charge that, that uh, David gave to Solomon was keep his judgments. God is the judge. God is the one who is over all things. Think of what Isaiah said in chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. David is charging Solomon to keep his commandments, keep his judgments. Think of 2 Timothy chapter 3. Think of how the evil was progressing more and more. But Paul warned Timothy, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you've learned them, and that from a childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. When David told Solomon to to keep the charge of the Lord... It was in everything, in all of his ways. Follow after God. Keep the testimonies. Keep the the statutes. Keep his commandments. Keep his judgments. These are the ones that you should follow. Maybe, in a sense, is do what I've taught you. There's going to be some things in your life that you're going to have to to do. And and there's going to be temptations out there. Be careful of them. Know whom you learned them from. You've learned them from me, but you also have learned them because they're in the law of Moses. You see, that's the source in which he's to go to. He said this, As it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. The source was the law of Moses. The result is when you do this, when you follow after God and you follow after these laws, that you may prosper in all that you do. If you want to be a prosperous king, listen to the law. Follow the law of Moses. And whatever you do, do all according to God's commands. Now I want us to look now at the promise. The promise to David In verse 4 it says that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me saying if your sons take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul he said you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. There was a promise to David. This promise was to David if, if your sons do these things if they walk before me in truth. With all their heart and with all their soul, meaning that in every way they are following after me, you always have a king on the throne. You think David knew that promise? He passed it on to Solomon. And he was hoping Solomon passed it on to his children. And the next one that takes the throne, they pass that on. In a way, he's giving him encouragement but also giving him instructions on how to do it. To walk before God in truth. Think of what God is. God is the author of truth. So therefore, he he must follow after God. Think of how we are to love. We are to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And they're supposed to live that way too. 
it is important to look at these last words. These last words have meaning. There is passion. It's inspiring and they're very intentional. Last words give instruction and directions. Why is it important to, to know David's last words? Because they're also inspiring for us. As we consider what, what way we could, should live, at first we need to understand that we're all going to die. We need to be strong. We need to be strong Christians. We need to be strong leaders of our family. We need to be strong in the way we live that we're not getting tempted with these silly things of life that will distract us from serving our God. We need to walk in His ways. We need to, to keep His commandments. We need to follow after Jesus Christ. It's important for us to, to, to know these last words because in some ways wouldn't these be our last words to encourage our children, our grandchildren, that they know the way of the Lord, that they know Jesus Christ, that they know how to be right with God. In some ways I'd be amiss if I didn't talk about Jesus' last words. Think of Matthew chapter 28. The most important thing that Jesus taught his disciples in some ways was his last words. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, Jesus' last words are commissioned for us. The most important thing that we could do in our life is to teach people the gospel. There are important things to do. And there's work that, we, that needs to be done. But Jesus gives us this necessary assignment for us to do, to teach, to teach people the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teach them to observe all that Jesus has commanded, and knowing that Jesus is with us as we do it. And as we consider the last words, are you right with God? Have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you put on Christ in baptism? You know, the hardest thing to do is to tell somebody that you want to become a Christian. At least that's the way I felt when I was younger. That was hard. But do it. It's the right thing to do. If you're here tonight and you have not become a Christian tonight, take that step. Take that step and become a Christian. Believe in Jesus Christ. Confess him, repent of your sins, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Or maybe you're not living right with God. Come back. And if we can help you do so tonight, please come forward as we sing. stand and sing.